Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. The Black Widow movie has finally been released. You can finally go see Marvel movies in theaters or on Disney Plus if you want. This is going to be my video for the ending and the post credit scene because it's a big link to Marvel Phase 4 and stuff that's happening in the future. Some of the stuff it connects to we've actually already seen. If you're brand new to the channel, I do Marvel videos every week. There's a bunch of huge stuff coming up with the Loki finale, the Marvel What If episodes, and even more relevant to what's happening during this video, the other stuff that the post credit scene in Black Widow is linking up to later this year. So we won't have to wait that long for Marvel to pay off what they're setting up in the post credit scene. Careful for spoilers if you have not seen the movie yet, because I'll be talking about everything from the movie, all the stuff that they set up. I'll just number these Easter eggs, WTF moments as we go along to stay organized, starting at the end of the movie. So Dracoff is the main villain of the film, even though it takes a while for her to actually get to him in the Red Room. Natasha Black Widow's whole arc in the movie is just clearing out all the emotional baggage and the loose ends she left when she defected to the United States in S.H.I.E.L.D. with Hawkeye and Nick Fury's help back during the early 2000s. She had previously thought that she had killed Dracoff because her mission, as she explains it, was the infamous Budapest story that she and Hawkeye kept referencing in all the Avengers movies. Her last act in defecting to the US and getting Nick Fury to sign off on it was to kill Dracoff in Budapest with Hawkeye's help and she says they destroyed the entire city just to get to him and blew up the whole building he was in but apparently she never bothered to check for a body and they explain there's this weird pheromone that Dracoff gives off that prevents the Black Widows from harming him physically. So the way she explains it, she thought the body was vaporized, but also there might have been some of that pheromone work at play, just kind of making her forget what actually happened to the body. It is part of the big Taskmaster reveal. Don't worry, we'll talk about Taskmaster in a second too. Her attempt to kill him was to hide a bomb in Dracoff's daughter's backpack, and at the time she was just a little schoolgirl visiting him at his office in Budapest. So she spent all these years thinking that she killed this little innocent girl who didn't do anything wrong just to get to Dracoff and that was meant to be what Loki was taunting her with when he referenced Dracoff's daughter in the first Avengers movie. She also spent all these years thinking that the Red Room itself had been destroyed but as she also finds out that was not the case as well because Dracoff survived and his daughter survived, Antonia. And at the end of the movie basically Black Widow, Yelena Belova, Red Guardian, Melina, pull a feint on Dracoff using an oldie but a goodie, the Black Widow face swap trick from Captain America Winter Soldier. They also used that same twist just a little while ago on Falcon and Winter Soldier with Sharon Carter. More on that stuff too in a second because the post credit scene was also originally meant to set up Falcon and Winter Soldier and another upcoming Disney Plus series for later this year. Even though they had to reshuffle things with the way they released the Marvel movies, like they delayed the Black Widow movie a whole bunch, they never changed anything about the Black Widow film. The post credit scene was always what it was going to be. The end of the movie was always what it was going to be. Natasha is able to get all this data on sleeper agent Black Widows that Dracoff has around the world, and there are hundreds of them. And the new version of the Red Room in present day has been chemically altering their brains to turn them into glorified finger puppets controlled remotely from the Red Room by Dracoff himself. I'd say they're like robots like the clones from Star Wars but they're not clones and the only one who actually has a chip in its brain or in its head is Antonia. But he does actually have kill switch commands built into them. He has certain commands built into them that he can call out order them to do very specific tasks. The idea is that it's basically chemical brainwashing. He also says that he wants to do this to Natasha now so that he'll have an Avenger that's his secret sleeper agent. Remember though, this is happening before the events of Avengers Infinity War. So it does kind of hurt the stakes a little bit that you know that this isn't going to come to pass. So part of the end of the movie though is in getting the locations and identities of all these sleeper agents to yell in a Belova and a sample of the antidote to free them from their conditioning, the chemical brainwashing so that they can deactivate all these sleeper agents without having to kill them and truly end the legacy of the Red Room. But the other big reveal being that Dracoff was able to avoid the Avengers all these years not only because he didn't engage them specifically like he kept all of his sleeper agents away from them so that he wouldn't land on their radar but also literally wouldn't land on their radar because the Red Room itself is also kind of a discount helicarrier that moves above cloud level all over the earth all the time to avoid detection from any of earth's systems. So the idea was is that he was also evading Nick Fury's detection as well. But while this is happening, Dracoff reveals that Taskmaster is actually his daughter, Antonio, who survived the blast in Budapest that almost killed him. And during her recovery, he had to put a chip in her neck and basically had to completely rewire her whole brain just so that she could live day to day. But that also gave him the idea for the Taskmaster protocol, which is the way they explain Taskmaster's abilities in the MCU. 
So obviously it's a big change to Taskmaster from the comics. In the comics, Taskmaster's name is Tony Masters. See what they did there, Tony Antonio. But he's a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent turned mercenary. And technically he doesn't have any special powers. His ability to copy people's moves is because he has photographic reflexes. Sort of like a boss level upgrade to having photographic memory. So in the MCU, Taskmaster is mostly the suit, the protocol, the technology. You see the heads up display feeding her information, real time data from fights and giving her suggestions and orders on how to defeat whoever it is she's fighting in the moment while the fight is happening. On top of that, her suit is kind of like a grab bag Swiss army knife of weapons and useful items on Taskmaster Easter eggs from the comics. Like she does have Taskmaster's sword and shield from the comics. And the reason why she copies all the Avengers moves, including Spider-Man's moves, is because she's watched all the footage from their fights since the events of the first Iron Man movie. Because, like I said, Dracoff has been doing this Taskmaster experiment for a long, long time. The way he talks about it during the movie is that he's been fighting the real war, the Shadow War, while the Avengers have been busy fighting the actual, physical, normal wars. But Yelena Belova actually winds up being the one to kill Dracoff. And even though you don't see the body, you do see his body go up in flames thousands of feet in the air, crashing in a big ship, which also gets blown apart at the seams. So the movie is playing it as if he's supposed to be permadead this time. Black Widow also manages to save Antonia Taskmaster by giving her the antidote to the chemical brainwashing that the other Black Widows got. They also wind up dosing all the other Black Widows that are there in the Red Room at the moment during this big fight, allowing them to escape before Dracoff in the Red Room wind up blowing up. And before our own Thunderbolt Ross comes rolling up to try and arrest Natasha again. I think part of the idea with that is that he's also kind of giving her a bit of a pass because of what she's done to take out Drake off in this threat because he isn't stupid like he does recognize the threat of the Black Widows in the Red Room and he is probably really happy that she did all the work for him. But the other Black Widows do come back to rescue Yelena Belova, Antonia, Taskmaster, Red Guardian, and Melina so that Ross can't arrest them too. So at least after the events of Avengers Endgame, minus Natasha, the whole family there is alive. But David Harbour, for instance, said that he wants to come back in Captain America 4 as Red Guardian. That might wind up happening. I mean, we'll see. They haven't said much about it yet. But there's not really much of an ending scene with Thunderbolt Ross. He's barely in the movie as it is. But there is some foreshadowing and Easter eggs set up for, say, like the She-Hulk series, which we're going to see next year in potential Red Hulk earlier in the movie. So at the beginning of the movie, when he's trying to arrest Natasha after the events of Civil War, she makes fun of him saying that he's on what? His third triple bypass? You don't look so good. You're embarrassing yourself. And he does look very thin, like something is really wrong with him medically. He looks way worse than he did during Civil War. And remember, the Black Widow movie takes place just a little while, just a hot minute after the end of Civil War. So theoretically, his declining health and implied connection to the Weapons Plus program in present day, connection to the Thunderbolts, what Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character, Contessa Valentina, Val, Madame Hydra, whatever you want to call her, is doing, just makes it seem like his health will continue to get worse. And that's where he might start experimenting with Weapons Plus serums, and that might lead him to MCU Red Hulk at some point. But also, since the Black Widows rescued Taskmaster, she's also fair game to come back in the future, working for the Contessa, Valentina, Val, Madame Hydra, whatever. But also because Taskmaster is more about the suit, the tech, they can't always give the name to someone else and do a more comic book accurate version of the character. But then there's a two week time jump. Natasha's wearing Yelena's jacket with all the pockets, which they spend a lot of the movie, a couple big scenes establishing as the jacket from Avengers Infinity War. And she's changed her hair to the Infinity War short blonde cut. So like her costume is basically her Infinity War costume. But now it makes sense why she looks like this. She uses Mason, who's like her supplier during the film, to get a Quinjet. And it's the same Quinjet that Captain America Secret Avengers were flying around when they show up in Avengers Infinity War, if that wasn't clear. The Quinjet that they were using the entire time they were on the DL. But she jokes with Mason that she just patched things up with one of her families and now she's going to do it with her other family, the Avengers, by breaking some of them out of prison, which is a reference to the raft. So that sort of helps you chart where this takes place in the timeline. The scene right here is meant to be happening right before the scene of Captain America showing up at the end of Civil War to bust them out of the raft. Then they go on the run for a couple of months until Avengers Infinity War picks up. But as she flies off, the Black Widow theme transitions to the version of the Avengers theme music, and then you get the actual post credit scene, which is set after Avengers Endgame and present day. But it's meant to take place before the events of Falcon and Winter Soldier. And Falcon and Winter Soldier was about six months after Avengers Endgame. So you have to imagine this scene is like four or five months after Avengers Endgame. 
and is Yelena Belova coming to visit Natasha's grave in the Midwest. So if it wasn't clear, she's now buried in Ohio in the same town where they grew up in the beginning of the movie for a couple years when they were children. The whole idea being that that was a very happy time for their family. Like that was when she felt like she had a family. So that's why they buried her there. That's also why they made all those jokes about the Midwest during the scene. She's driving just a normal American pickup truck. She has a dog. Earlier in the movie, she had said that if she had the opportunity, she'd always wanted to have a dog. She cleans up Natasha's grave and is this really sad, somber moment. But then they cut the tension by having Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character, Madame Hydra, show up like a comedy ninja, blow her nose, and start cracking wise about how terrible the Midwest is. She also jokes that there's no way that Yelena is going to get a raise that she asked for. Like, yeah, you and me both. Just reminding you that Valentina, Madame Hydra, is also working for someone else, which I think right now it's kind of implied is someone inside the U.S. government like Thunderbolt Ross. Just because of the team she's setting up is basically MCU Thunderbolts. But they also reveal that Yelena has been working for her for a good long while after the events of Avengers Endgame. Possibly even before that. They don't really explain when they initially met each other and started working together. But she says she's going to be paid a ton of money for this next job and she'll have the opportunity to get revenge on the man responsible for Natasha's death. And they reveal Hawkeye's picture and he's wearing his Ronin costume from Avengers Endgame. So the idea is that they'll cover the events of that, Yelena going to kill Hawkeye during the Hawkeye Marvel Disney Plus series later this year. They haven't given us a release date for that, but it's supposed to happen during the fall at some point. So you wanted to wait that long for them to pay this off. Maybe their Martha moment will be Lucky the Pizza Dog. Like, oh, you're a dog person too. Okay, well, you can't be all that bad. The bigger deal here, though, obviously, is that Val, whoever she's working for, like maybe Thunderbolt Ross, as I said, is implied, are putting together this Thunderbolts team and they want Hawkeye dead for some reason. And they're just taking advantage of Yelena, misleading her, making her think that Hawkeye is the reason that Black Widow died on Vormir, when in fact it was way more complicated and Hawkeye was the one who actually tried to sacrifice himself, but Black Widow fought him and won the honor of throwing herself off that cliff. The whole idea being that she was trying to save both of her families, and even though they never make it clear in the Black Widow film if Yelena Belova, Red Guardian, or Melina were snapped, but I think it's implied that at least part of their group was. And part of the reason why Black Widow was so willing to sacrifice herself is that not only, yes, she was trying to save half the universe and half of her family, the Avengers that got snapped, but she was also trying to bring back some of her Russian family who also probably got snapped. But Thunderbolt Ross or Valentina, whoever she's working for in the U.S. government, doesn't want Yelena to know that. So presumably she'll find out after she catches up with Hawkeye during the Hawkeye series, but not before they have at least some of a battle royale, like their own version of a Budapest. And there were some other Hawkeye references during the movie earlier when she actually meets up with Yelena in their safe house in Budapest. Like Yelena asks, what kind of gun makes these holes? And she points to the wall with a bunch of holes. And Black Widow says, oh, those aren't gun holes. Those are arrow holes. And it's implied that that's when Hawkeye had come to try and kill her before she decided to defect. But the other big connection here to Marvel Phase 4 in the post credit scene is that originally Marvel was going to release a Black Widow movie before Falcon and Winter Soldier, so we were supposed to meet Julia Louis-Dreyfus' character here for the first time and then see her show up on Falcon and Winter Soldier to recruit U.S. agent John Walker. But either way, the Hawkeye series is the next place we'll see Yelena, and the idea is that now the mantle of Black Widow has been passed to her inside the MCU, so she is the de facto main Black Widow that will show up in the Marvel movies. They did talk about doing Black Widow 2, but they said that it would follow Yelena's character, like it would be a Black Widow movie just about her. But the idea is also that Yelena will show up during Avengers 5, future Avengers movies, maybe even Captain America 4. Any of the ground level, solo level Marvel movies are fair game. And then she'd also probably show up as part of this Thunderbolts team that she's a part of implied right now as Julie Louis-Dreyfus' character is slowly putting it together. But that probably won't happen for a couple of years. There's also a rumor that they're also setting up a Dark Avengers project, but that would be more of a movie thing just because it's implied to be much bigger characters, much bigger scale. But everybody, let me know in the comments if you have any other big questions about what happens during the post credit scene and how it sets up future Marvel Phase 4 projects. The Marvel What If series is coming up after the Loki finale in a couple weeks, so I will be doing full What If videos. I've got a couple Loki finale videos that I'll post really soon. I'm also working on a bigger Black Widow full breakdown and Easter egg video for the entire movie that should post later this weekend. While you wait for everything, everyone click here for my full Loki episode 5 video and click here for all my other Loki episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.